Hi everybody, it's Doreen and I'm back with a birthday card that I made for my sister-in-law. This year I was a couple of days late getting her card to her because I had a bunch of things going on and time got away from me so I didn't get it to her on her birthday but she'll get it a couple of days after her birthday. But as I always say, it's the thought that counts. So we are going to be using a silhouette today so what does our card look like? This is the card that we will be making, and it is a three-dimensional card. So it looks like this. So come on and join me, and I'm going to show you how I made this card. Okay, everybody, so let's bring up the supplies so we can get started. Now, the instructions for this card, um, there are written instructions on the blog of the person who this card is made by. I don't have the name offhand, but I'm going to put a link down in the description bar below the um, link to the written instructions. And they're not in English, but they're, it's pretty simple to put together. I'm not even going to show you how to lay it out on your mat because it's really simple. Um, I've already gone ahead and put in my inside sentiment, and I used the print and cut feature to do that. I also went ahead and inked my edges, and this time I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink, and it's the Age Mahogany. So now, one thing I want to point out when you're putting this together is, I found that I had to do a little maneuvering to get the pieces into the slants, but it does work out. And you want to start off with your top row first of your cardstock. So you want to do the top slants first. And they just fit inside here. So I've already put them in once just so I could see how difficult they were to get in. So you need to be careful because remember this is paper or cardstock. So you'll have to do a little... Um, pushing in there to get the piece in there. So that's your first one. And then you'll go ahead and add your next one, which is going to go in the second slots right here. And you'll fold and bend this over and have it go into that slant right there. So that's your next one. And then your last one goes down here at the bottom. And it fits inside like so. And then you'll bend this one over and fit that one within here. So you pretty much basically got your three pieces on like that. Now for your top layer of the cake, you're just going to slide that in there and put that in there. And there's no right or wrong reason, um, way to put this in here. You can put it in there like so. And then you'll add your candle piece up under there and your frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put my candle piece along here. And one thing that I did want to do that I didn't do on this piece is I didn't go ahead and ink my edges. So let me do that real quick. And I'm just going to go along here and just ink the edges. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add this to the back layer of here. And actually I didn't have to ink all the way to the bottom there because it's going to sit up like that. So let me just put my sponge dabbler away. And we'll move the ink up here. And then I'm just going to put some ink or tape rather along this piece here and then I'm going to add that candle like so and then you can slide your piece down within here and if you want to tilt it you can or you can make it straight however you want to do it so I'm going to get some tape on the back of here and I'm just going to use my Tombow to do that some there and then I'm going to add my top layer to the cake now the other thing you have to remember is leave yourself enough room 
to put your flame and I'm not going to add the flame right at this moment because I actually used some glossy accent on it so I need for it to dry so now you can go ahead and put your swirl layers now I couldn't decide if I should put these on before I lay this put these inside the slants or after it's up to you how you want to do it I went ahead and ran um, my pieces through my stick Byron sticker maker which looks like this instead of using um, tape or glue the other thing that I also did was I ran the pieces through my Cuddlebug swirl folder just so I could give it some dimension so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tweezers to put these pieces on and be very careful when you um, do put these on that you don't rip the paper like I almost did previously so this one right here on the end is just came off so that's why I said be very careful when you do this so I'm going to kind of stick that back on there and I'm going to put this going across here like so so I think it would be better if you put these on first before you add them your strips into the slants it would be a little easier to get them on but rather than take them off and try it again we're just going to go ahead and do this so now I'm going to go ahead and add the next one and then we'll pretty much be done with our card but we're going to add just a few little bit more embellishments on here so I'm going to just line this up over here and just lightly press this down and as I said before I think it would probably be easier if you put these on before you put them in the slant in the instructions she didn't show that in the diagram and as I said before that the instructions are not in English but you can pretty much figure out what you're supposed to do by just looking at the drawing or the photographs that she has so now we'll get our last one on and we'll start like over in here and then just go across and we're gonna have to get we'll start on this end first and then work our way around and as I said you need to be very careful now what I did with to get my um, embellishment pieces here is I didn't have any cardstock the color that I wanted to make these right here so what I did was I found a color that I liked in the silhouette software and just kept playing with the color until I got the color I wanted and then after I did that I used my print and cut feature to just go ahead and print this out in that color and then cut it and I also the other reason why I wanted to do that is you know how I don't like to waste cardstock and just to cut my inside sentiment I've been using a whole um, eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock and I didn't want to waste it so that's why I went ahead and did these so now the only thing left to do is add our frame and I'm gonna add some more little embellishments and I'll come back with the finished card okay everybody so I'm back with the finished card and I had to do a little bit of adjusting I would suggest if you're gonna make this card that you do put your embellishment on your pieces first before you put them inside the little um, slants because um, when I was trying to put mine on they kept the, the pieces kept popping out of the slants so I would suggest that you do put those on first and as you can see I've added some bling on the front here and the other thing that I did was I went ahead and took my um, dimensional glue that's by Sparkle and Sprinkle 
and I put that inside the little opening spaces along here and then I just took some glitter and shook that on there to add just a little bit of dimension and sparkle on the card. Then I also went ahead and took my little teeny tiny stamp here and stamped out um, birthday wishes. And as you can see I did use the glossy accent for the flame of the candle. Now what I also found out is I wasn't happy with the fact that the pieces in the front kept popping out while I was um, working with the card and even when I had the card and I was laying it down and trying to fit it inside the envelope which we'll talk about the envelope in a minute so what I decided to do was actually glue the pieces down so if you're gonna do this make sure you do put your embellishments on first and then inside the little slants I glued those down flat and then I went back to my silhouette and cut out I took the original card and made a duplicate of it and then I just took my knife tool and cut down the center here and I cut out another piece to cover up where I glued down the slant pieces from the front of the card and after I glued this down I realized I could have stamped something on this side too but if I do that I'll be pushing that down so I'm just gonna leave it like it is so this one was not a very difficult card it's just that I had to do a lot of maneuvering and changing around to get it the way that I wanted now as far as the envelope I did make an envelope that measures five and a half by five using my we are memory keeper punch board but because this is such a dimensional card I don't think this is going to fit in here I haven't try putting it inside here because this glue and glitter is still kind of wet so I am going to try to get it and see if it does fit inside if it doesn't then I'm just going to put it in a box because this is going in the mail so this is my actual card but I don't I'm sorry envelope but I'm not sure if it's going to fit in there or not so that's it everybody this is the birthday card that I've made for my sister-in-law and sorry about being late this year Christy but Happy birthday. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.